All right, guys, I got something really interesting for you today. As you know, I make my own eGPU enclosures and I do them for NVIDIA workstation cards and also low profile 5060 cards, which are a lot more inexpensive than these workstation cards. But today I have a treat because uh, I have in here the RTX 4000 SFF, but this isn't the ADA version. This is the Blackwell version as opposed to the ADA version I have on this side. So the Blackwell 4000 SFF, no one's really seen the performance on this. So let's take a look at the performance and compare it to some of our previous benchmarks. All right, so first let's talk about what we're getting with this RTX 4000 Blackwell edition. Um, here we have it right here. Uh, shout out to Tech Power Up, a uh, great website for getting information about GPUs. Um, now, if you want to compare this to the ADA version, it is the exact same size. It is drop-in replacement if you have one of my GPU enclosures. And uh, here's the ADA version. You can see they are the same exact uh, dimensions. Uh, what is different, though, is we now have a 192-bit bus versus the 160-bit bus on the ADA version. Also, if you look at the core count, 6144 cores versus 8960. If you do the math on that, that is a 46% uplift solely in the number of cores. And that's without taking into account the fact that we're now on GDDR7 uh, RAM and the 192-bit bus width. So I'm hoping we get quite a bit of uplift in performance on this version. Uh, if we compare that to the 5060, which is also an option that would fit in these enclosures and just in general, you know, it has 3840 cores, a 120-bit bus width. It does have GDDR7, only 8 gigs of RAM. That's one thing I failed to mention is the ADA generation only had 20 gigabytes of RAM, uh, but Blackwell has the full 24 a gigabyte memory size so pretty cool stuff here so another thing worth mentioning is this number of cores 8960 uh, is about the same as a 5070 ti so uh, i mean it's the same amount of cores the bus bent width is a little bit different obviously the sff card is heavily power limited it does not have a power connector on it it only pulls power from the motherboard, which limits it to only 70 watts. So before our last generation, we had a theoretical performance of 299 gigaflops. It's about 300 gigaflops. The 5060 that we already looked at in, in previous videos um, has a theoretical performance of 299.6 gigaflops, so exact same. If you look at the memory bandwidth, the 5060 has 448. And over here, the memory bandwidth is 280 on ADA. And on Blackwell, we're looking at 432 gigabytes a second. So, uh, you know, bandwidth is about the same as the 5060, but we are on a wider bus. So that's a, definitely a, a huge consideration. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing the RTX now Pro 4000 Blackwell to the RTX 4000 ADA, both in SFF, uh, but I did recently do a video comparing uh, it to low profile 5060 cards uh, that you know small form factor enthusiasts are also interested in. Uh, so if you wanna look at that video, I'll have a, a link in the description. Uh, but also, you can use that to compare to see how all four cards that fit inside uh, small form factor or my eGPU enclosures that I sell and see how they all compare with each other. Okay, and of course, we'll start with our favorite Time Spy. And you can see both of these are using roughly the same amount of power. They are only pulling from PCIe, like I've said, so that makes sense. They idle similarly and they load similarly which is good and i'm gonna go ahead and throw the results up there you can see we got 13244 with blackwell using the same amount of power which is a 22 percent improvement in performance one of the other cool things if you did look at my other video the 5060 if you look at it in terms of points per watt when i optimized i could get about 94 points per watt but this is 156 points per watt 
Up next, Cyberpunk. And we're doing this at ray tracing medium settings. And you can see they're both using the same amount of power. And if you watch the frame rate there, you're seeing fairly similar results, but you, we do have, you know, a decent edge on Blackwell. In fact, it's a 26% improvement by the time we get to the end of this. So 26% improvement using the same amount of power is pretty decent. Bright Memory Infinite RTX. This really tests our ray tracing and we're doing it at 1440p. And again, we'll throw the results up early. They are 74 for Ada, 91 for Blackwell, a 23% improvement. So again, at the same power, we're seeing a pretty clear pattern, you know, 22 to 26% improvement across the board. And finally, we do some LLM workloads. This is Llama 8.1 at 8 billion parameters. And of course, Blackwell focuses on AI performance. That's kind of NVIDIA's focus. With Blackwell, we saw 30% improvement using less power than ADA. Blackwell seemed to use less power in these tests. 64 tokens per second versus about 50. All right, so the Blackwell RTX Pro 4000 SFF Blackwell, man, what a mouthful. Uh, we see it outclass its predecessor, four extra gigabytes of RAM, 22 to 30% improvement in performance while using the exact same amount of power. Blackwell is very efficient. Uh, they did this by adding more cores, faster memory, uh, but still kept it within the same power envelope and it really shows uh, that We've got a real winner here for small form factor cards who need workstation class devices. Now, would I recommend this card? Not for the casual gamer. You're actually probably better off with a 5060, even though it only has eight gigabytes of RAM. But the second you want to do something memory intensive, the 5060, the, that eight gigabytes of RAM is not gonna be your friend. But uh, in general, uh, for those of you who who already have these workstation cards, the cool thing is they're coming in at the same pricing that we saw with ADA. So it is a generational improvement worth getting if you're already gonna get a workstation card like this, which is, don't get me wrong, it's very expensive, uh, but for the size and the capability and the VRAM, it's there's a case to be made for it. So, um, but yeah, casual people go with the 5060 LP. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing what the new Blackwell workstation card SFF can do and get subscribed up and we'll see you soon.